good evening uh, from uh, Berlin. We are here for the PAM meeting, and we have together with us uh, Dr. Konradsen, uh, who is from uh, Karolinska Institute in, based in Sweden. Uh, he's a pediatrician uh, working on pediatric allergy, and he's going to speak uh, to us about his recent uh, publication in PAI. Uh, so, um, uh, in your paper, uh, Dr. Konsatsen, you uh, uh, try to uh, find uh, clinical useful biomarkers uh, for asthma morbidity. Uh, could you please uh, provide uh, to us uh, with some details regarding the rationale and uh, the methods of your study? Yes. Uh, so, the data set we used in this uh, project was uh, originally designed to compare uh, to investigate children with severe asthma and compare how they, differ, how, how they differ from children with more controlled disease. And we have published some papers on this issue bef before comparing severe and controlled asthmatics. However, in the inclusion criteria, we only used um, the level of asthma control and the degree of medication the patient needed to define severe asthma and controlled asthma. And as you notice, no biomarker is included in the severity definition of, severe as of, uh, of asthma. So in this uh, particular analysis, we wanted to see how various biomarkers of uh, inflammation associate to asthma morbidity, or morbidity measured by symptom control or pulmonary function or bronchial hyperresponsiveness. And more specifically, we looked at uh, how blood eosinophils relate to pulmonary function and symptoms, and how uh, periosteine relates to the morbidity, and how pheno relates to the asthma morbidity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, under which rationale did you choose uh, periosteine uh, in peripheral blood as a biomarker? And uh, furthermore, do you uh, plan to use uh, also uh, uh, more uh, recognized uh, TH? two markers or markers of two, two immune response in peripheral blood uh, for these purposes? Uh, so to answer the first question first, the periosteine. Uh, so periosteine has been demonstrated or suggested to be a marker of a Th2 mediated asthmatic disease in adults. Both uh, as it has uh, serum levels of per periosteine has been shown to be associated to bronchial hyperresponsiveness and uh, uh, and asthma severity and also response to treatment with uh, uh, in corticosteroids and also response to more experimental treatments such as anti-IL-4 and anti-IL-13. However, the knowledge about periosteine in children is more, uh, is more scarce and so we wanted to see how, how this biomarker relates to asthma mobility in, in children. And, and, and as we found out, uh, as it turned out, uh, it's a big problem with periosteine in, in children, and that is that uh, the osteoblasts uh, have, uh, produce high levels of periosteine also, and camouflage or so mask the uh, the asthma, the um, the periosteine that is produced by the airway epithelial cells. So, uh, in this particular analysis, we found no association between uh, asthma morbidity and peri serum periosteine levels. So, to the other question was. Uh, if you plan to uh, investigate the role of more classical uh, markers of TH2 immune response in peripheral blood in, for these purposes or a combination of these uh, markers? Uh, so by more classical you mean like... Uh, like IL-4, IL-13? Yeah, so actually we have ongoing analysis for, this, for, for these markers, both of TH2 mediated, such as, as you mentioned, IL-4, IL-5, IL-13, mm -hmm. but also TH1 mediated cytokines. Uh, and also of uh, IL-17, and uh, currently we are doing the statistical analysis to see if we can find any clinical Signific significance of uh, doing this analysis. Okay, thank mm. you. And uh, a very interesting finding of your study is uh, that, the, the, um, that levels of uh, blood eosinophils as well uh, as uh, FNO uh, levels uh, are more increased in the younger asthmatics. Uh, could you please provide with some explanation? Yes, yeah, that's, it's an, uh, an interesting finding and one that probably should have been discussed within the paper also. And um, I think the explanation for this finding is, uh, has something to do with the food allergy. Population-based studies has taught us that um, food allergy or uh, allergic sensitization to food allergens is uh, independently associated with increased levels of uh, pheno and uh, blood eosinophils. And in this particular cohort that we investigated, the, the prevalence or the frequency of uh, allergic sensitization to food allergens was more common, uh, a lot more common in the younger part of the cohort compared to the older part of the cohort, which is also what we know from the clinic that 
food allergy is most common among the younger children. And I think this is, might be a huge part of the explanation why we find high levels of blood eosinophils and, uh, okay. and phenol in, uh, in, in, this, in the younger children. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And uh, one last question. Um, if uh, we could, uh, could have a conclusion uh, for, uh, from your study, uh, which is the most uh, clinically useful uh, b uh, biomarker that you could suggest uh, as to have it in uh, real uh, life, uh, let's say, clinical practice? Yeah, so according to this analysis, uh, the most useful biomarkers would be those easily attainable uh, and well-established biomarkers from exhaled air, that is uh, phenol, exhaled nitric oxide, and uh, to combine that with uh, a marker of a systemic eosinophil inflammation, and that is blood eosinophils, which is also very easily attainable in most clinical settings. And that, I think, uh, gives a very ni nice information about the asthma mobility. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you.